Big rust thing down there. Well, that is, when you get close to it, it's the whole, it's a whole car, but oh. only the, <laughs> the lid is sticking up. Yeah. The whole engine is there still. Oh, really? Like a whole car down there? Yeah. So we're up, gonna paint in the Badlands today. Um, this is sort of a, <laughs> it's a funny spot because the way you get to it is you kind of go behind the Canadian Tire in town. Town's over that way. Badlands over this way. We're kind of up on the top and there's tons of cool stones on the ground. There's petrified wood. Um, and ironstone, this piece I found here is little crystals on it. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Yeah, see it's got little yellow crystals on it. I'm gonna keep that. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna do some sketching. I brought like a minimal amount of materials. Just a small watercolor palette, some pencils, and some pens. I think I'll just do some tiny studies of little rocks and plants and things like that. What are you going to paint, Finn? I think I'm going to do a wider shot of the valley. Yeah? Coming over here and get some of those dead cars in. Yeah, those dead cars are really neat. <laughs> There's tons of grasshoppers out here. And also chipmunks. Lots of uh, cacti. And it's really, really hot. Um, down here, there's not very much wind. You can see all of this, all of the sediment that's washed down off the hills. Um, this area um, and Drumheller is mostly, hey, what's this? Sweet. Here's a bone, <laughs> some sort of recent bone. If I had to guess, I guess maybe a deer or a cow. There's tons of deer prints down here, so this could definitely be a deer. I'm gonna take that home. I'm gonna go see these dead cars over here. But yeah, um, around here it's Cretaceous age sediment often. Um, in Alberta, we get a lot of Cretaceous and a lot of Paleocene, but Drumheller is nearby the <clears throat> Horseshoe Canyon formation, and that's late Cretaceous. So we have in this area a lot of Edmontosaurus, we have some Tyrannosaurs, some Dromaeosaurs. Um, we have a cool one called uh, a Trociraptor. And yeah, during the summer at the museum, a lot of the paleontologists are out at... Um, they're out doing field work. And they're collecting dinosaurs. Not dinosaurs like these. Man, look at these cars. I wonder how long they've been here. I wonder what happened. <laughs> Maybe it was some sort of race or like someone stole them and dumped them here. It's pretty flipped though and very rusty. But look at how the chrome has sort of stayed shiny all this time. I don't know if you can hear all those grasshoppers, they're really loud. Um, but yeah, here it's, uh, in, in Alberta anyway, it's illegal to collect fossils. Um, the government owns all the fossils in the ground. Um, if you find fossils on the surface, uh, and it's not in a provincial park. You can keep them, but if you have to do any sort of digging, it is illegal to collect them and take them. And it's illegal to sell fossils from Alberta. So most of the fossils that you see sold are from the States or from Africa. Yeah, I think here you can sell petrified wood and you can sell amylite, which is the jewel form of ammonites. 
um, and I think you can sell plant fossils, perhaps. But yeah, there's a lot of laws in Alberta protecting our fossils from ending up in places where we can't study them and share them with everyone. Yeah, these cars are pretty neat. Actually, I was going to see if maybe there's some sort of marking on this one here to see what year it's from. I think that would be really cool. Let's see. I would draw down here, but it's just it's so hot. So I'm going to go back up to the upper level and draw there probably. Is this a license plate? Well, maybe it was once, but I don't think we're going to get any information from that. Let's see. Anything back here? Not really. Um, if you've got any idea where these cars are from, or how old they might be. Could they even have bullet holes? <laughs> That's crazy. Some new garbage in there. Clearly people have been exploring and climbing around in there. Ooh, I just got a nice breeze. You can probably hear that on the microphone. That's nice. Mm. But yeah, there's tons of space in this town just to like walk around, explore, and I'm super happy about that. It's really awesome. And uh, in the summer, everywhere you go smells like sage. It's so delicious. It smells so good. A lot of people out here go sage picking. Um, and you can dry the sage and use them for smudges. <clears throat> Just burn them in your house without sort of applying any significance to it too. Because it just smells good, okay? <laughs> it just smells good. Alright, probably going to need both hands to climb back up the, uh, the hills here. Climb back up that sediment, especially now that I'm carrying this bone. <laughs> it's super dry, super clean, super bleached. That's awesome. Huh. Alright, so there's also been people who've telling me since I moved here that there's a giant Jesus somewhere. I just found him. There he is. Pretty big. Look at those heat waves. Oh, it's so hot. I found him. I found the giant Jesus. Alright, what's your painting? Why are you starting with this color? Well, I'm starting with green so that I can cover it all up. <laughs> I'm trying to make the most loud, obvious color possible to start with. So that as I get into more muted reds and blues and purples, then I'll know if I've missed a spot. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to see any of this bright neon green? It might shine end? through a little bit. And if, in that case, then it'll just provide a nice complementary to the other colors. Yeah. I don't know if the camera can even pick this up, but this is like, imagine highlighter yellow. This is it. It's sort of like green screen. <laughs> yeah, green. it's green screen. It's like painting with a green screen. Are you going to make it look like Mars? I'm going to make it look like Mars, because to me, this is Mars. <laughs> This is Mars, and the grasshoppers are the aliens. They're really loud. Alright, so it's pretty bright out here. You're not going to be able to see much, but you might not be able to hear much with the wind either, so I apologize for that. But I've set up like a little scene here with that bone I found, and I'm going to paint it with just probably one or two washes of paint. This paper doesn't take paint very well, so I just have to be very conservative with my layering. And then I think after that I'm going to finish it with some pen and ink. Um, yeah, because, I mean, even though I came out to this beautiful scenery, I don't really feel like painting a landscape today. So I'll paint a miniature one. Alright, so there's the wash that I did. Um, I'm traveling light today, so I don't have my tripod. Um, 
Otherwise I would film and paint at the same time, but that's just not practical. Um, yeah, I just kept it really loose. I mixed a ton of colors for the rocks. And actually this little watercolor set that I got just at Walmart is behaving better on this cheap paper than my Daniel Smith watercolors do. So, I don't know, I guess... Uh, I guess they like to play nice together. Um, the other watercolors I've tested on here have also been the Primatech ones, so those are a little bit, um, I don't know, they're kind of a bit of a diva sometimes, just the way that they soak into paper. Um, but yeah, this looks really nice. I like how it's drying, and I'm just going to let it bake in the sun and then get some pen onto it. So here I just used a lighter color of pen to do the bone because I want to make sure that the bone stays overall a lighter value than the rest of the image. So I'm not going to put a lot of this black ink onto the bone. Um, I'm going to leave that as the lightest place in the entire painting um, just by limiting what colors I'm putting on it. Um, and as you can see here, I have placed my lines along the grain of the bone, the way that it naturally grows and, and flows. Um, I'm not trying to add the definition to it in a way that I don't see in real life, if that makes sense. Like, with hatching, it's easy to go the wrong direction, um, or go a direction that you're not thinking about, um, and then you're... I just drew on my pants, haha. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, you know, your, your form of the object doesn't look quite right. Um, so it's always important to decide what direction you want your lines to go if you're doing line work, um, because that can really impact the effect that your drawing has and also knowing when to not have lines and where not to have them. I'm going to put a little bit of a black in the shadow on the bone here but that's going to be about the only place. And then everything else, the rocks and this tiny root are going to be with the black as well. Yeah, he is. look at him, he's so small. Ah. Little Chippy, where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Oh, <laughs> oh he's cute. Well, that was my little piece, and here is Finn's much more ambitious piece. Um, why don't you tell the, the folks on YouTube why What's you made it, why it made why you made it pink? Yeah, I made it pink because, like I said at the outset, I wanted to suggest sort of a Martian landscape. Really, the the Mars that Philip Kiedek writes about in his books, like uh, Three Stigmata and Martian time slip, because when he writes about other planets in his uh, body of work, he's really writing about his own backyard and uh, places like Northern California. And so I thought I would take my own backyard and uh, try to apply the same logic to it. So as you can see, I've played fairly fast and loose with the... Uh, you know, details of the location and the proportions of the scene and I'm just sort of selecting anything I think is interesting and uh, that I think would work in the scene. Yeah, so plain air isn't always about, you know, making things exactly proportionately correct. Often it is. Often you want uh, to get a, a very accurate description of the scene and put your own creativity in the back seat but right now I'm just gathering information.
it'll help me in uh, future paintings. Yeah. Yeah, I really like this one. I think it's really fun. But uh, yeah, we go painting often enough that we can sort of plan and pick and choose what sort of paintings we're going to do before we get out into the landscape. Um, like today I knew I wanted to travel light and just do a little sort of quick wash and a pen drawing. Finn knew he wanted to paint Mars. And really uh, the subject doesn't matter that much because the, uh, the lines of the growth and the bone that you painted and the, the lines of the erosion and the hills here are all based on the same uh, processes in nature, just fluid dynamics and gravity creating yeah. patterns yeah. over and over again. Yeah, a lot of what it is for plein air painting is just trying to internalize those patterns so they can inform your artwork where later. You, where your hand goes. Yeah, you get used to the wrist motions and you can make better art either out in the Badlands or inside at your desk. Nice work, Finn. Oh, thanks for watching. Hi, YouTube. Thanks. All right, goodbye, everybody.